And in the flesh, as opposed to being states apart, we're here to record Indian camp today. All right, so I didn't write down anything. Like, so since this is completely kind of off the cuff, you'll see I have no plot summary. So I'll just do it off my memory, if that's okay. Let's, let's, let's fill it in. Did you read the story? I, I was just kind of hoping that through this recap that you would inform me what happened in the story. So okay, basically, we have young Nick Adams, yes. right? You've read some Nick Adams stories with the killers, and it's a character that is, I mean, a lot of people argue to be autobiographical on some level with Hemingway. For sure. But it's a young boy, and he's going in, he gets in a canoe with his dad, who's a surgeon, Dr. Adams. They go across the water. They're brought by local Native Americans somewhere in Michigan. Basically, a woman's been in labor for two days, right? And if you if you've been in labor that long, that <laughs> I've never been in labor, so <laughs> right, <laughs> any amount of time well, is too long. I, I've never shared that. my wife with with our son. It was uh, twenty hours. Holy crap! Yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable at that point, from what she told me. <laughs> it wow. Reminds me pretty often, but uh, <laughs> yeah, she does. You don't know what pain's like, okay? Like, and I'm like, all right, I get it, I get it. So basically, they're going into this camp to basically help deliver the baby. Doctor Adams is, and long story short. Uh, they deliver the baby and basically another Indian man. They're, they're never quite sure what the relationship is, but that's what sort of husband. Maybe what? it's implied. It's pretty heavily implied, but we need to talk about that today. But for sure, basically slits his neck ear to ear. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of questions from from young Nick Adams, little Nicky. He's kind of asking these questions about like, is it hard to die? Do men die? Do women die? Will it be hard to die? Should should I live forever is kind of the, the last sentence of the, the story. So that that's it in a nutshell, I would say. It's and a good I, summary. Huh, okay. All right. So I, I didn't read it. I, I got all that from Wikipedia. Yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about it. Um, first question I had for you today is what, what's the purpose, this purpose of the story? I think that it's a coming of age story where you have a young boy that is, really close to his father. And I almost feel like this is not a rift between them, but it redefines their relationship. Why do you say they're close? Well, at the beginning of the story, he's sitting on his father's lap or he's sitting like right next to him. When they go over in the canoe, there's his uncle George and there's his dad and there's Nick and either he's sitting on his lap or with him. And at the end of the story, he's not sitting with his dad. At the end of the story, when they leave the camp and it's just the the father and son, which I think is significant, we should talk about that later, is they're sitting in opposite ends of the rowboat. And I, and I think that matters. Well, well, let's just go into it now, right? Like, so to, to me, this is a little bit of an initiation story. Young Nick is learning about the world, I would say. I don't know if I want to call it a coming of age, but I think it's, it's kind of learning to test y- yourself as a young man. Uh, I, I don't know what your experience was, but I'll tell you, me being a father, you know, I just talk about how I have my son. There's a lot of moments where I have these challenges of, of how much do I let him in on uh, to, to kind of share a little bit. Actually, my grandmother recently passed away. It's been a year or so now, but it's it open casket. And my son was six years old at the time. And I'm like, no, we're going to send him downstairs with the other kids. I, I don't want him to see great grandma like that, basically my grandma. And we were getting ready to leave and he, he will leave for the, the, you know, the, the site. And he's like, I, I want to see Graham. I want to see Gigi. I want to see her. We're like, no, it's not a good idea, mm. buddy. You're pretty young. And my wife and I talked about this. We're like, we're not going to let him see Gigi open casket and all. And he's like, he started to throw a fit. And, and just because he throws a fit doesn't mean he gets his way. <laughs> right. But, but it was very emotionally disturbing to me. Like he, this was part of him saying goodbye to his grandmother. The problem that I had is how much do I let my son see? Right. And I think we see that with Dr. Adams in the story in terms of what he tries to usher away young Nick from like, oh, you don't want to see this is the ugly part when I'm sewing her back up. And, you know, when the, the guy slits his neck, he's, he's trying to usher Nick away like, hey, you know, this this is gruesome. And you see Nick starts to ask those questions of mortality. And it's the same thing with my son. We, we ended up letting him go up to say goodbye to Gigi. And it made him very sad. Right. But I think it was part of his emotional experience. I don't know if that was good parenting or not, I guess. I, I don't know if anyone knows the answer of what good parenting is, but it's that trial of what do you let your kid in on? And I think that's kind of what we see Nick doing is he's, he's seeing some of the realities of life and death in the story. 
But the father also, I think, is knowing that his son needs to progress in life, right? He needs to, I don't, I hate to say grow up, but there is moments in your life where you have these very uh, impactful memories that will define kind of who you are. And I think we see here where he's witnessing literally life and death in the same experience of what that will mean to him and whether his father compartmentalizes it for him or even shields him from it, he allows him to experience both of it. And that is really, really significant, I think, to how we as people will interpret life. Do you think he's a good father? I'm not a father, so I feel that it's not fair me for, for me to judge that. However, I think that he's doing the best that he can. And I think that whether this scars him or not in a positive or negative way, it's still something important. And as a child, a lot of times your memories are going to be not necessarily false memories, but you will take it differently than maybe your parents did. And that's OK, because he's going to remember possibly possibly I'm, you know, in in making my own assumption here, maybe, you know, Nick 30 years later when he's telling his kids or grandkids about this, he's like, oh, I remember, you know, your grandfather, you know, had this great experience where we went on this adventure and we saved this woman's life and her baby and stuff. And that's all he remembers. And he doesn't remember the death part of it. So, you know, it, it, it could be, it could be mm -hmm. positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to read one of the excerpts from the story. I want to get your take on this one because I, th I think this is kind of like a hot topic here. The lady is going to have a baby, Nick, he said. I know, said Nick. You don't know, said his father. Listen to me. What she is going through is called being in labor. The baby wants to be born and she wants it to be born. All her muscles are trying to get the baby born. That is what is happening when she screams. I see, said Nick. Just then the woman cried out. Oh, daddy. Can't you give her something to make her stop screaming, asked Nick. No, I haven't any anesthetic, his father said. But her screams are not important. I don't hear them because they are not important. Just give it to me raw. Like, what? Oh, I, I, I'm probably going to have a different take, so I want you to hit me with your actual thoughts. I was angry. I feel like it was very dismissive. It feels very sexist of, like, why... Why do you feel this way? But then also, I I I, I thought about it because I feel like I knew you were going to bring this up. It's one, of, <laughs> it's one of the controversial parts of the story. Of is that because he has no emotional connection to this? It's his job. And I remember being a, a teacher, or I remember in many jobs throughout my life, of sometimes you do have to have this like association and disassociation. My wife, as you know, a therapist, has to have that all the time. She's emotionally connected to these people, but at some point you have to have a break, otherwise it, it could break you. Okay. So when we look at the way men and women react in this story, I don't I actually didn't have a huge interest in kind of breaking it down this way, but something that I thought was kind of interesting is when you talk about like the sexism. Who's depicted as strong in this story? Because the woman's going through child labor for two straight days, which is unimaginable with mm. no anesthetic, right? And the C-section with that no anesthetic. <laughs> I can't imagine. We ain't surviving that. No, take me out, right? Like, just, I'm done. But if you look at, like, um, not that I think it's the men, but I think it's, like, as a person, if you can't deal with some of those true core traumatic things then should you be should you be there to it like like is that is that something you can stand as a human being and you see how a lot of the men are like we're out all right we, we can't hear the screams we gotta go and i don't know if it's just men I, I imagine there's some women like like when you hear something like if someone's truly in pain that's hard to hear you kind of don't want to hear someone in pain almost sometimes out of sympathy like like i want the pain to stop Right. And they know the doctor's doing the best. They know like like them going in that room is not going to do anything. I think there's an argument here, too, that there's a what should we what are we able to bear 
And then what are we too weak to bear? Because I think when it comes to, I, I don't believe in like the, I mean, I know it's common to say this is masculine and this is feminine, but I just, I think there's some things people are strong enough to bear. And I think a lot of pe- characters in this story couldn't do it. And that's why they looked away. The way I interpret the surgeon is he's saying, don't get distracted. What's important is we save this woman's life. We save the baby's life because they both want it. This is nature and this is important for us to go on. Don't get distracted with things that are not going to impact that outcome. And it's like kind of like a lesson that you kind of had to teach your kid too. is kind of how I interpreted it. I think that's fair to kind of circle back to what you said, though, of the wife endures all of this physical agony. The man above because there's like, I guess, bunk beds, which is very odd. Mm. She's in the lower bunk bed and she's having the baby. And above her is a man who cut his foot with an axe a couple days ago as well, who may or may not be her husband. And he takes his own life. Is that because he couldn't endure the pain of her pain? Was it because he couldn't endure the pain that it possibly might not be his child? So, I mean, that kind of plays into of like, what are we able to ourselves endure? And... I think the dad is trying to teach his son the levels of what you're able to survive in life. And this is a growing moment for Nick. He is not necessarily maybe growing into manhood, but he's definitely leaving childhood behind and moving into adolescence. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about life and death. Like that's uh, when you when you look at like those tv show ratings like y or g for kids like you can't show certain things in terms of like alcohol tobacco Uh, i don't know what's restricted from like a life death perspective but clearly like bad guys just get punched and they go away or something like (laughs) it's not like a a critical mortality thing because i think we're shielding kids from that i i don't know the psychology behind it but but that is something of of leaving childhood behind to that perspective definitely um in in terms of that guy like like there's a good question about him being strong is is his suicide because of the pain of his foot i mean it's possible it seems unlikely unlikely especially with a doctor there like hey after (laughs) this woman probably has priority right now (laughs) i'll sew up your foot (laughs) Uh, (laughs) afterwards maybe we can talk to the doctor about the foot it seems unlikely that it would be because of the pain. And it seems unlikely that he has such high sympathy for the woman that he's like, oh man, she's in so much pain. Like, 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 like that, that would be a reason. I don't know. Like mm. may, may, maybe one in a certain percent, like might have like that grand level of empathy to me. It's like you said, it's, it's that suggest suggestion factor. Like, is it the father and, or, or a failed father, right? Was he supposed to be the father and someone else was the father instead? Mm. and and he couldn't take it and that's why he he's like you know i can't live with this shame that seems more likely to me as to why because why would hemingway put that in the story yeah right 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 above to like the woman essentially i I don't know anything about the living quarters of of native americans at the time in in northern michigan but yeah i I don't either it and there's been suggestion that possibly the the third party that we haven't talked a lot about his uncle george is possibly the father Right. That he's the guy handing out cigars. Why is he even there? Like, I mean, you have Mm. the doctor there who is obviously there to save the baby and the woman. You have the son there who's kind of the apprentice and maybe learning this trade. Why is Uncle George there? Is that part of Native American culture to smoke cigars when? No, that's American culture. Like you hand out cigar. Hey, I'm having a baby. Right, and you hand right. out the cigars like olden he, days. Yeah, yeah. Not so much anymore. But and Uncle George is handing out cigars all to the Native Americans. So it's like is, that's his way of celebrating his child. Maybe say. his child. Right. And so you think that this guy maybe is married to the woman or they had a relationship. And then you have, you know, the outsider coming in and breaking the relationship. And, you know, they're having a baby and he he can't take the physical pain, the emotional pain mm. as well. And so you have, you know, him, him right. taking his own life. And and that's typical Hemingway. You have no context. Like, yeah. We have no idea, but there, but he's in the story. Why is he there? Right. Is he just another example of a male? Cause remember he was in the shadows smoking in the beginning, far away. And he was just kind of like behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. I kind of took it as just like another male that, 
couldn't live in the trauma of the moment that couldn't stand up to help the, deliver the child like we all relied on dr adams let's be honest yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need nick to to bring the next generation forward but like i, I view it as a, a lot of criticism of like nobody was able to step forward they're in the shadows they're running away from behind and that's kind of what it means to grow up and i, I don't want to say be a man but like everybody's gonna have to fight face these moments where it's like am i gonna step up to the plate or am I going to run away? Am I going to do pleasurable things like smoke cigars and hide and just celebrate when I wasn't there to work through that trauma? Or if nobody was there to work that woman through the trauma. What happens? Yeah. There, there might not be any cell. There mm. might be, there might be mourning. So in the, in the, in the, like that, there's like a life and death circle kind of in the story. Like you alluded yeah, to, sure. you, you just have nothing but death almost. If there wasn't someone to step through that moment, the, the moment of grace to help someone to actually get life moving forward. So it's almost like there's like that argument of we need each other almost to continue on for like that, that cycle to make the rebirth happen. And there's a lot of different, I guess, aspects of what type of person you're going to be. Are you going to be the, and I hate to use this word savior, because that's what the doctor is. I and mean, he's literally saving the child's life. He's saving the, the woman's life. Are you going to be the supporter like the son? Are you going to be the guy in the shadows like the uncle, are you going to be the one that gives up like the dad guy, you know, above the bunk guy? I don't know. So I guess there's a lot of different choices of which guy are you going to be in your life? Well, and it's kind of interesting because when if I could read the last little sentence of the story in the early morning on the lake, sitting in the stem of the boat with his father rowing, he felt quite sure that he would never die. So this is Nikki. Little Nick saying he's never going to die, right? Is is what what what's that take? Or and I, I assume that's metaphoric. <laughs> kids well, very no, emotional. I mean, let's think about that. Like, where we're older now, so we feel the the creaks and the cracks and the snap of crack pops. But think of when you were twenty. Did you think about your mortality when you were sixteen? Did you think about your mortality when you were eight? Did you think about your mortality? You, you, you could fall down, you went, you gone. You didn't think about broken bones. You didn't think about that. You felt that you were never going to die because it wasn't something that I think was in your thought. And I think for the first time, maybe there's a little crack for Nick. I think if you had asked me when I was 20, do you think about your retirement? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I totally do. But the creaks and the cracks and the waking up, I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm, no, this this is... <laughs> This is a much different experience being a 40 plus year old man as opposed to when I was a teenager, for sure. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I mean, that's our discussion. Anything else you wanted to talk about? No, no. I think it's great. Hey, congratulations. This is 100 years. 1924. Oh. This story was written. Published. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, <laughs> let us know what other Nick Adams story we should cover next or Ernest Hemingway, for that matter. There's going to be a playlist down below. Uh, as well as links if you wanted to get involved and help out the channel and such. Look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Feel free to leave a little boat emoji if you enjoyed the conversation but aren't sure what to add. Helps the YouTube algorithm. My name's Ben Una. Peace. Peace. <laughs>